Hey guys, Drew here with God's Manufacturing, bringing you another installation video today on the engine light kit, specifically for the 5th gen Ram 25 and 3500 applications. Uh, this is going to be very, very similar to other engine light kits that we make. I'll touch on some of those points throughout this process because we're gonna reuse this video for things like the fourth gen Ram heavy duty trucks and possibly some of the 1500 applications as well. But nonetheless, what we're gonna be installing today is our God's Manufacturing Engine Light Kit with the KC Cyclone Light Option. When purchasing this at www.godsmfg.com, you have the option of brackets only, Baja, designs rock lights or the KC Cyclone V2s. If you opt for one of the options with the lights, you're also going to get the wiring harness and all of the necessary hardware to get this installed. Now that we know what we're installing today, let's talk about the first steps. Well, you're gonna need a little pry tool. I'm using a little wedge style version. Got these at AutoZone, they're nothing fancy. And then we're gonna go ahead and redirect the camera over to the hood and show you what we're looking for. The first step for this installation is gonna be locating these little triangular or radioactive shaped looking clips. These are gonna exist in your fifth gen trucks with this sound dampening installed on the hood. It's also going to exist in the fourth gens if that sound dampening is installed. In the fifth gen application, we're gonna be locating two of these. So there's one over the passenger side of the engine bay. There's also one over the driver's side. Removal of these is the exact same it does take a little bit of gusto to get these off. These clips are strong and they're likely going to break when you're pulling them off. However, we do not reuse them, so it's really not a big deal. The only thing we wanna make note of is if it shoots into the engine bay and we are not able to recover it, we need to look around for that because you don't want it to be lodged into anything that might be mechanically inclined. So I'm gonna just come over here with my little wedge tool and we're gonna get that going. And I'm gonna assist it with some fingers here and just really tug it off. And I got it off, it broke the clips, but again, not a big deal. In your fourth gen Ram HD applications, there's only gonna be one clip here in the center of the hood, but in the fifth gens, we've got two, so I'm gonna go to the other side and remove that second one now. With the clips pulled out of the holes in the hood or hole in a fourth gen application, we need to open the hole up just a little bit. We're gonna send you a nine 30 seconds drill bit. We recommend running the drill bit in reverse so you can cut through that hole. If you're not gonna run it in reverse, you're having issues cutting, please use a stop collar. If you punch through, you're gonna hit the upper skin of your hood and you're gonna leave a very odd looking dent that faces outward. People are gonna ask you how you got it and it's gonna be weird. So what we're gonna do is just push that mat out of the way, get our drill bit lined up and very slowly go through here. Does not take a lot to break through, the material's pretty thin. But once you do, just give it a couple runs here. Make sure it cleans off all those burrs. If you've got some loose metal, just click those out of the way. If you have a turbo, make sure nothing is falling into that vicinity of your truck. That being said, we're now ready to install the rib nuts into the roof, or I'm sorry, into the hood that will ultimately be holding the brackets for our lights. To install these brackets to the hood of the truck, we need to install rib nuts. Rib nuts are a pretty simple little piece of hardware. However, if you do not set them properly, it could cause you a bit of frustration. We are gonna be using a rib nut gun today. We highly recommend that you purchase something like this off of Amazon. We have one that's capable of setting up to M8 rib nuts. So we're not gonna be using a lot of the throw per se in this one. But the reason we're talking about this is because you wanna test it. We're gonna send you an extra rib nut so you know how far to pull. So I'm gonna go here and we're gonna look for the crush. So I'm gonna clamp down here and that's all we go. So I, my hands only moved a couple of inches. You're gonna notice a change in the pressure required to crush it. And if you go much past that, you're gonna have issues with pulling the threads out of the rib nuts that we send to you. They are aluminum, so they're easy to crush, they're easy to install, they're never gonna corrode, things like that. However, if you put too much sauce on it, you might cause damage to the rib nut. Again, we really do recommend using a rib nut gun. It's the best way to get a square setting. You can get these on Amazon for like 30 bucks and they're just nice to have for other applications around the house. So use this as an excuse to buy another tool when you talk to your wife. Now that we've talked about how to use the rib nut gun 
and what to look for, what to feel for really, because you're not gonna be able to see these since they're blind. We're gonna go ahead and install it into the hood itself. So to do that, I'm gonna get it up here. I'm gonna push that mat out of the way, get this lined up into the hole, pushing firmly up into the bottom of the hood. I'm going to make my clamp. That feels pretty good, about the same amount of pull. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and back that screw off here. And that leaves us with a nicely installed rib nut in the hood. Repeat that process one more time on a fifth gen. If you're doing this on a fourth gen, you're done. We can move on to the next step. For this next step, we need to cut a small hole in the mat that's on the hood itself. Um, in a fourth gen application, it's only gonna be one. In a fifth gen application, it's gonna be two. In your fifth gen applications, you're gonna receive two brackets since they are so far apart here and the lights on them are going to be wired differently, if that makes sense. So your passenger side light is gonna be this guy with a shorter lead. Your driver side light is going to have a lead that's about a foot longer. It's actually 14 inches longer. And we'll talk about why that is here in just a second, but it's actually for your benefit. So what I'm gonna do so I can cut this little slit in the best place possible, I'm going to hold the light up to the hood and just kind of see where is that wire gonna come through. So it looks like it's coming through right about here. So if we think about this like a clock, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut a little slit here, maybe at about the two o'clock position. Now I'm using a fresh razor knife, so I have a good clean cut without too much uh, struggle here. And we're just gonna move that back and forth and just cut through that mat. All right, now that we've got through that, We'll do the same thing on the driver's side. However, the light and the wire is gonna be clocked in the opposite direction, so you'll be cutting it at ideally like the 10 o'clock position. <clears throat> With the slots or the slits cut into the mat on the hood itself, we wanna grab our wiring harness next and feed that through. You can feed it up the opposite way, but for ease of install, it's easier to pull eight feet of wire down than it is to push one foot of wire up. So I'm gonna take this, you're gonna use the end that does not have any connectors. We're gonna find that hole here. We're just gonna go ahead and move that through. Okay, got it started here. And then once you get it started, you can see I've also released the bottom of the mat from the tabs on the hood. Just go ahead and push this through. It should move through here pretty smoothly and the wire pops out. Right now, we're not really worried about making this pretty. So we're just gonna move this through here. And on your fifth gen, you're gonna get to a connection here that's about two and a half, three feet from the end. Push that the whole way through. That's actually gonna be our plug-in for the driver's side. Pull that through a little more. And then we'll pull this to the end, leaving ourselves just a little bit. So we go ahead and plug our light in, and then we'll go ahead and install that light and bracket to the hood before we move over to the driver's side. In this next step, you're gonna need a three 30 seconds Allen wrench. You're also going to need the provided bolt and one washer. Then you're going to grab your passenger side light. Again, the one with the shorter leads here. And this is hopefully really simple for you guys, red to red black to black. We're going to go ahead and plug this in now. And you'll feel those connectors click into place. Don't need a ton of force. And they actually come pre-greased from KC. Once you've got that pushed in, we're going to push that wiring into the hood, pulling it through here, getting our excess out. And then that bracket can kind of have a place. Again, 330 seconds. Mine's on a screwdriver looking thing here. And we're gonna take that, put the bolt and washer through the bracket, find our rib nut, and we're gonna go ahead and get that guy started. And as we get towards the end of this bolt, we will orient our light, just moving that over here and getting it as square to the hood as we can. Once you've done that, go ahead and fully tighten it down. And with that, we have 
our passenger side installed. We'll talk about moving over to the driver next. All right, so we have our passenger side light installed. Before we hop over to the driver, I wanna talk about a couple notes. If you guys opted for the Baja Designs option, your connectors are gonna work in the same way. However, they're gonna be a little bit different. They're also gonna be heat shrink connectors versus the sealed ones that KC provides. So the heat shrink connectors, once you connect them, before you push them through the hood, you're gonna to wanna to hit those with a heat gun or a lighter just to shrink those up and really give yourself a solid waterproof connection. And then you can move that through. Also, when you're tightening the brackets, regardless of whether this is on a fifth gen or a fourth gen Ram truck, you do not want to put too much sauce on the bolt. The hardware we send you is number 8-32. It's an eight size bolt, 32 thread pitch per inch. Um, and they're not very big. Again, they use a 3 30 seconds Allen. Those are pretty easy to strip out. So once you get it tight, stop. This guy only weighs a couple ounces, but you can see I don't have any wiggle on it. And I literally tightened that bolt with two fingers. So do not go for extra credit. It's not gonna end up being worth it. On the fifth gen trucks, your installation is gonna look very, very similar to the passenger side that we've already done when we're talking about that driver's side light. But we need to push the wire through the whole way. We're actually gonna connect this at what would be the bottom of the hood in this location or the back of the engine bay. And that's what those other connectors that we pushed through earlier were. So I'm gonna go ahead, locate the little slit I cut. And we're just gonna push those wires through. It's a little tricky to get them started. We wanna make sure that they're going down. All right, and with that moving down, we can just reach down here. And I've got my connectors right here, right behind that mat. And then same process using at 330 seconds Allen, we're gonna go ahead and get the bracket started. And as we get it tightened here, just going to orient that I'm trying to get this basically square as I can to the engine itself. Give it a few more cranks, do one last check. I'm just doing a little visual inspection here, kind of getting it where it looks good. And then give it that last two finger tighten we already talked about. Okay, at this point, brackets are installed. We're ready to do some more wiring. With both brackets installed and the wiring pushed through the hood, we've got one more connection to make and that's for that driver light. The pigtail for the driver light is just behind this. The reason we've left it a little bit short is so that it tucks up nicely behind this mat and you don't have to worry about it dangling out the bottom. So at this point, I'm just gonna give you some blind instruction. Uh, this one's gonna be kind of hard for us to film because I'm gonna have to have the camera guy hold the mat out of the way. But your general idea is just to pull this mat down a little bit. Don't pull on it too much. We don't wanna put a bunch of creases or anything in it. Um, but I'll have him hold the mat out of the way. I'll make the connections just the same as we did on the passenger side, red to red, black to black. And then from there, we'll go ahead and tuck this bottom edge all the way back in. And we'll talk about getting this routed the rest of the way down to your battery and ultimately your switch or your powerhouse. Now that the driver's side connection is made, we need to talk about getting all of our wiring tucked back up under this mat. All that slack will tuck up nicely. What we're talking about here is this TechFlex wire. The other wire you guys can see in frame is actually for a hood mounted solar panel. We'll do another video on that later, but we wanna get this all tucked away. So to do that, we're just going to simply push this back up under here, and then we're going to tuck the little tabs to the engine mat back in here. Once we get over to this corner, we want to start using the provided zip ties to route this and move it down along our windshield washer line. And ultimately we want to get it into this vicinity next. So I'm going to do that and then we'll reconvene in just a minute. Now that we've got all the wires that are connecting the two lights to one another and running across the hood, tucked up behind the mat and the mat pushed back into its little clips, we're going to start using the provided zip ties and running this down our windshield washer line. So I'm gonna go ahead and make one connection up here high 
And then however often you wanna make them from here is totally up to you. We're just trying to keep this wire out of the way of our hood hinges. Don't need to make these super, super tight. Use a pair of uh, flush clippers if you have them or just a regular pair of wire cutters will be fine. And then I'm gonna keep it on the inside of this bracket here. And I'll do another one down here towards this bottom bolt holding the hood on. And again, these zip ties don't need to be super tight, but just enough so they don't slide back and forth. And then just clip them as you go here, and then kind of rotate that head around if you can to keep it away. Make it a little more low profile. And then here, I just want to try to match the length of that windshield washer line. Um, it's going to be a little tricky to get a zip tie back in there, but I'll go ahead and I'll do one loosely here at the bottom of the bracket, and then we'll just try to slide it back as best as we can. So doing that, I'm also kind of piggybacking off of my ditch light wiring at this point too. So pushing that back, got plenty of slack in there for the hinge of the hood to operate. And then I'll just zip tie <coughs> the washer line, my ditch light, and these hood lights all together at one little spot here. Trim that tab. And then from here, it's really kind of how you wanna go. Obviously we can take the direct line and go straight to the battery. Um, I'm gonna follow some OEM wiring, so I'm gonna go just around the battery because I ultimately wanna get my switch and stuff set up over here on our God's Manufacturing powerhouse. So I'm gonna do that here quickly and then we'll talk about what we need to do next. Now that the wiring is run in the route that you really want it to, I went around my battery to piggyback off some existing wiring harnesses I had. Uh, we need to talk about switch mounting location. Uh, so the switch we provide you is just a simple waterproof 12 volt interrupter, more or less. Um, we're gonna send you a very sticky glue dot that you can put pretty much on any smooth surface here in the engine bay. And then once it gets a little bit of heat from the engine bay after a quick drive, um, it's gonna activate and it's gonna be really, really strong. Like any adhesive, we recommend installing this in an area that's at least 40 degrees or warmer. And you always wanna clean your surface as well. I used just a little bit of alcohol that was diluted by some water, wiped that down, and then I just cleaned up with a microfiber towel so my surface is dry. Where am I gonna mount my switch? Well, I'm gonna mount it directly here to the powerhouse so I can connect it to the auxiliary fuse block that comes with the powerhouse units. Um, most of you guys are probably gonna be installing this with uh, an inline fuse because you aren't cool enough to have a powerhouse, but if, if you don't have one, you should get one. Cheap plug right there. But anyway, um, we wanna identify the best spot for this. So over here where all of these bolts are for things like the battery mount, our bracing system, and these fifth gen rams, this is a, there's a lot of smooth real estate over here that we could mount it to. So you could clean that off, you could mount it there. I mean, you could even get away with something like mounting it on the top of this bar or the side of this bar. One place we do not recommend mounting it is on this plastic valence. Sure, these do have a removable cap and you could install this so just the button is coming through and then the body is underneath. However, if you choose to do that, just keep in mind that this piece has to come off anytime you guys are doing engine work at the front of the truck. So. If you're doing grill lights or you're doing headlights, maybe you're going to a Morimoto or an Alpha Rex, or you're simply doing an air intake, this has to come off. So that might get a little inconvenient for you guys because one of those days you're gonna forget about it and you're gonna probably bring that whole thing with us and then you're gonna be calling us for replacement parts. So we don't recommend it here, but pretty much anywhere else in this vicinity is fair game. General rule of thumb, make sure that it's not next to anything that's really hot and don't put it next to anything that moves. Uh, we don't want any wires or anything getting caught and or melted. But I've mounted, or I've chose my mounting location, so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna remove the cover of the fuse box on that powerhouse system. I'm gonna put this on my fifth terminal, so I'm gonna use a number two screwdriver here. And I'm gonna go ahead and undo this screw. Please note, we do not have the fuse in this one yet. You do not wanna be installing this with the fuse that we provide to you. Then I'm gonna take this little ring terminal that we've attached. That ring terminal will come in your kit as well. And then we're just going to get this into location. 
get all these ring terminals square so they match the rest of them. And that looks pretty good there. Just gonna bend that down a little bit so it matches the rest of them. And then I'm not gonna glue dot this quite yet. I wanna go ahead and get these connections made. That's what we're gonna talk about next. So in this next step, we are going to get our switch actually mounted and we're gonna talk a little bit about what the final wiring looks like. I'm holding an inline fuse here in my hand. Probably a lot of you guys are gonna be using this with the provided three amp fuse for this system. Um, what is that gonna look like exactly? So the switch that I've mounted here to the powerhouse with a ring terminal, you are simply going to butt connect that to the inline fuse and then you'll add a ring terminal to the other side of this inline fuse and connect it directly to one of the positive posts on your battery. And then on the other side, it's gonna be very similar principle to this. You're gonna add a ring terminal to your black ground wire and then you would just body ground it right over here on the side with one of these two existing body ground screws that you can find in both the Hemi and the Cummins motor options. I'm going to add it to our common bus, bus block here in the uh, powerhouse system. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this step now. Um, so set that inline fuse out of the way. I'm gonna go ahead and pop off the negative cover for the bus block as well. And then I'm gonna go ahead and mount it on this next screw down the way. So I'll use that number two Phillips once again. I'll pull this out here, set that screw to the side. They are small, be careful not to drop them. If you do, it's a number 832 screw to replace those. Gonna go ahead, run our little wire through here for our powerhouse. And then I'm going to take the screw by hand here, get that started. And then I'll come back in with the screwdriver and do a final tighten on that. Just once again, making sure that this stays square to everything else. Once you've got it in its final spot, give it one more half turn lock it down, and then we're just gonna take this little guy and we're just gonna bend it down so it all looks nice and neat. Now, on the other side of this switch, we have a spade connection. I've gone ahead, crimped and heat shrunk both of those in place, so I'm just going to get that inserted in, and then I've got one more heat shrink to do, so I'm gonna do that connection now, and then we'll push that wire back out of the way. Note, at this point, we've made all our connections but we don't have our fuse in place. That is gonna be the absolute last step that we do in this process. So let me heat sh shrink this quick and I'll be right back. With our spade connection here, heat shrunk, I'm gonna go ahead and apply the provided glue dot next. So we're gonna go ahead and pull the clear side of the protector off. And then we're going to mount this directly to the back of the switch. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that and then I'm gonna use the paper to my advantage here and just push down on that switch against the powerhouse to get some pressure on there. That way it really bites the back of the switch. And then from there, I'm going to pull the paper side off of the glue dot. Paper side is off of the glue dot. Set that to the side. And then in that clean location, just gonna go ahead and push down my switch in the best spot for me. So I'm just gonna Mount it right there, looks pretty good. Give that a little bit of wiggle, let that adhesive really bite into the powder coat on the powerhouse, or if you're mounting it over here, really let it set up nice to that nice smooth paint. And then from there, we're pretty much done. I'm just gonna move these wires around, make them look a little bit better. And then I'm gonna tuck these down over here with my other stuff. And that is pretty much good to go. So this last step, regardless of whether you have a powerhouse or the inline fuse system, we're going to take the provided three amp fuse and this switch may be on or off. So when I plug this in, those lights may come on or it'll be in the off position. So don't freak out. Mine is in the on position. So do that, I'm gonna flip it around so I can read it better. And we've got our three amp in there. And then to control your engine lights, all you do is press that button, super simple. Your installation of your engine light kit is now done. Go ahead, tidy up anything that you need to do. Make sure you didn't leave any tools inside the engine bay. I see I've got a razor knife over there and a screwdriver right here. So go ahead and get those out of here and then you guys are ready to rock on.